Just about a month ago, my good buddy Heapsel Games, link down below, worked really hard to put together this Bioshock retrospective video. And now admittedly, I had never played Bioshock until I did this review, but I went ahead and I watched his video and he did fair warn me that there were spoilers. But really enjoying all of his content, I went ahead and watched through anyway. So playing Bioshock now, I did know some of the spoilers that were gonna happen, but I really wanted to test and play Bioshock for myself. So 15 years later, how does Bioshock hold up for somebody that's playing it for the first time? Now, you know how we do it on the channel. Will Bioshock be biosawed? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Okay, let's just be honest and fair. Bioshock isn't gonna sniff the garage. It's not gonna come close to the workbench. Now released in 2007 for the Xbox 360, it was later ported to the PS3 and then to the Switch and then to the Bioshock collection behind me and has just been heralded as being one of the greatest games ever made. Now set in 1960, the game starts with opening scene that's pretty short, but it's very crazy that the player is surviving a plane crash. I mean, that's a pretty legit, kind of scary, creepy kind of way to start off a game that your player, you know, survives a plane crash. And what's really cool about this opening scene is if you stick around in the water, you can actually watch the plane tail completely go under and it just adds to the ambience and the atmosphere that you just witnessed and survived a plane crash. It's absolutely horrifying at its core for what it is. Now in the Bioshock collection, there's actually unlockables that are interviews with the creators of the game. And one of the really cool unlockables is they go on to talk about this opening sequence. Now, when they put the game out for testing and demoing, there was no opening sequence and the game was flopping. It wasn't doing very well at the, with the testers. So they very quickly threw together this opening cutscene and it really began to resonate with the players and really provided the just oomph that it needed to kind of get over the hill and make this game really start to work. So you arrive in Rapture which is set in 1960, which was designed by Andrew Ryan. And this is supposed to be this underwater utopia for all of these people just to live their life out in peace and glory and have such a great time. I won't offer any spoilers, but let's be real. Let's be honest. It goes to hell really, really quick. Moving on to the review for a game that's 15 years old, played by somebody for the first time in 2022, how does Bioshock hold up? Jumping right into the graphics, I do have this game on the 360, PS3, and on the PS4, which I was playing on the PS5, if that matters for anything. And graphically, across the 360, PS3, and obviously the collection, the game still looks fantastic. It still looks really, really well, Rapture is still a beautiful idea and design. Walking through these pipes that are underneath where you have the clear glass beside you and you can see out into the city and see the water. It's a really unique and fresh idea and a fresh atmosphere and it looks gorgeous. It still holds up very, very well. A lot of the games that were from this console generation still do hold up very, very well and Bioshock here is no different. Up next, let's take a look at the sounds and the soundtrack. Now for me, this is a category within this game that is a bit subjective. Maybe it's because I'm older and have bad hearing, I don't know. So take this with a grain of salt. This may not be a problem for you, but it was a problem for me on the 360, PS3, and the collection that it was a problem the whole time I played that. And that is, this game only has two cutscenes, the beginning and the end. Spoiler, I guess. But the game and the storyline is told through 
dialogue. It's told through subtitles on the screen. And no matter what I did, unless I blew out my speakers and drove my whole family crazy, I could not hear the dialogue. Even with a 7.1 surround headset on, I still found the dialogue with the audio very low to hear. And if I didn't have the subtitles on, I would have missed the majority of the story here. And again, that just may be my issue, so I really won't hold the game to that, but that is my experience, that is what I experienced playing this game. Now on to one of the most important categories, and if you follow the channel, you know what I'm talking about, and that is the controls. So how does the controls in Bioshock hold up now? Well, unlike most first person shooters that came out around this time period, Bioshock still holds up and plays very, very well. First person shooters have really evolved to all kind of have the pretty standard control scheme. There's nothing too crazy. It all kind of plays and flows the same and it makes it work. Whereas going back to a game like Rainbow Six Vegas, for example, is extremely hard to go back to because the controls are all over the place and it's really difficult and hard to play. In Bioshock, I had no issues. The controls were fluid, the controls were fine, the response time was great. It really plays very, very well. It feels like a modern day shooter. The controls are excellent and it holds up so well. I didn't have to modify any controls. I didn't have to change anything. It was pick up and play and it controls so well. On to the next category for the review, we have the gameplay. But how does the gameplay hold up in Bioshock for a player like me for the first time? Was I having fun with Bioshock? And well, honestly, I have to say yes. I did have a really good time playing Bioshock. The controls were great, as I just mentioned. The level design was awesome. It was beautiful. The graphics look amazing. The big daddies, the little sisters, all of that just added elements to the gameplay. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, there is a very unique gameplay element that definitely forces you to make a decision one way or another. And especially at the beginning of the game, it really makes you consider what you want to do either. The pacing of the game and the levels really felt nice. It honestly wasn't up until the very last level that I felt the pacing of the game really turned for the worse. Throughout the whole game, I don't want to say that it was hard for me to put down, but I thoroughly enjoyed my playing time with it and I managed to beat this game in about two days. There were certain gameplay elements, certain power-ups that I felt weren't needed and didn't add value at all, but you're always going to have stuff like that in games and RPG type of games like this where there's a progression system that you can be better and upgrade. And there were some that I didn't feel were needed, but it didn't take anything away from the game. Finally, on to the last category for the review here, and that is replay value. I love a good game that has replay value. A new game plus goes a long way in my book. And now I've mentioned it several times now, the unique gameplay elements of this game do add for a lot of replay value. And with the achievements on the 360, the trophies on the PS3, and all of the trophies on the Bioshock collection, this game does have a ton of replay value, especially if you wanna go through and unlock and find all of the director commentary and interviews, which were a lot of fun to watch. It was really cool to check these guys out and hear their thoughts and how they walk through the process of making this game. If you're going to play Bioshock for the first time, I do highly recommend just getting the collection on the PS4 and playing it that way. The trophies are all there. There's a ton of replay value just playing it through there and it holds up and plays so well. And now admittedly, I won't be jumping back into Bioshock to play it again, and I really won't play any of the rest of the series, but that's not me saying this is a bad game, and that's not me saying that, the, that those games aren't worth playing, and that's not me saying there's not replay value here, because there absolutely is, and this game 
does strike a chord with a lot of people. So it's understandable why there's so much replay value where people can go right back into it and start a new game right when they finish it. Wrapping this up here, the unique gameplay elements that I don't know if, have they, if they've been done like that since, and the decisions that the player is forced to make really do try to do something different and unique with the gameplay, and it works. It really, really does. And certain aspects of that gameplay element really do stick with you as a player throughout the entirety of this game until you beat it and really find out what the game is all about and what you've been doing with this element, the Little Sisters, the entire time. Now this game is revered as being one of the greatest games ever made. And while I don't share that sentiment, I have no issue saying that Bioshock is definitely one of the greatest games released during that generation of consoles. I had an excellent time playing through Bioshock, even knowing spoilers. The game is so great and it holds up so well and it's still a lot of fun to play. Bioshock stands up and holds out strong and still is a fantastic game. Bioshock, I have to give a 9.1 out of 10. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate everybody who watches these videos. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click subscribe as it does mean a lot to me. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought about Bioshock and how great of a game is it to you. As always, take care, be good, and we will see you all next time.